Every one of us is born with a dream of what we can be. Think of it like a vision, a calling, or a gifting. But as we grow up, we often get distracted from the stream. Robin Moss has just achieved one of her dreams, writing a novel, Cherry Pie. And we can all benefit from the truths she shares. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. Cherry Andrews is a bright, beautiful, red-headed girl. On the outside, she looks like a normal 10-year-old, but Cherry just happens to be a child prodigy. Not only has she won multiple competitions playing the piano, but she also has tested at a genius IQ level. She is now preparing to enter into the 8th grade after having skipped yet another grade because her teachers and parents feel she needs more of a challenge. That was Robin Moss. Now, Robin, I've known you for nearly 20 years, and it wasn't until a few months ago that I learned you had aspirations of being an author. What motivated you to uh, write this first book, Cherry Pie? I definitely was interested in writing from a very early age. I just never thought it would be something that I wanted to do as a full-time job or anything like that. And so I was one day watching Unsolved Mysteries and realized there was a prodigy child that was 15 years old going into college. And it made me realize that that must be something really, really difficult for a child to have to be grown in an atmosphere of other students that were way older than she was. Now, Cherry's story is a bit different from that. Why don't you tell us a little background on who she is? So Cherry is a 10-year-old girl, and she's been playing the piano since she can remember. Her mother was um, a pianist also, a concert pianist, and she learned how to play the piano from her, but she just excelled at it so fast, and she really enjoyed it. And so that, coupling with homeschooling for a while, and then she went into a public school system, but she just was extremely smarter than all the other children. So her teachers skipped her a few grades to just try to keep her from being left behind and just feeling that she wasn't progressing. So they were trying to give her more of a challenge. All your children are very smart. Did they play a part in the inspiration for the story? In a way, yes. A lot of it is because I have girls, and so I I can definitely relate. But more of the story is kind of more about my life in being an outsider in school and not being involved with everything and feeling like being left out of a lot of stuff. Not that I was a prodigy child myself, but just knowing that if you can't fit in, it's really hard to have friends and to be in a place where you don't feel like you're comfortable. Yours was a very unusual case. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? I don't think many people have heard of anything like that. I grew up a minority in an Indian reservation, a Native American reservation. I was very outcast. I was the only white girl, and not just because I was Caucasian or white. It was more of, I looked very different. I was very different, very, very different. I had a different upbringing, a very, very different culture. I spent 20 years there, so I had to learn how my parents taught me in their culture while being in a completely different place. So how does this translate to Cherry's story? So she's having to be in a world that she's really smart, and she really knows what she's doing in an atmosphere with the kids that are way older than her. But her body image, just her physical being, it's really hard for her to be in a place where she's only 10 years old, around 13-year-olds. I mean, a 13-year-old is going through puberty, is, is going through the changes, and she's still not quite there, but she's as smart as they are mentally. Now, I noticed your book is published by Christian Faith Publishers. Where does the spiritual angle come in? Oh, she's definitely a Christian, and she, her parents, they go, they go to church in the book. She looks to God for guidance. She's trying to find herself in a public school with a Christian faith. So she finds it hard to be able to meld the two together. And then, too, it's very hard to find even decent literature for uh, teens and preteens. My wife tutors kids in that age, junior high, high school. She tries to find books that don't have 
all these cuss words and stuff like that. And this book seems like it would appeal to kids trying to go the right way and even give them a role model. Yes, it's a wholesome book. It's a really good read for a young adult. The market wasn't the ideal market because you don't find too many of them that are just wanting to just jump out and buy a book, a, you know, a young adult series. So God, for whatever reason, put it on my heart to write this book, to write this series. Because when I was a young adult and teenager, I liked these kinds of books. I liked Christian books because that's what I grew up reading. So I felt that it was something that I could give back. Very good. Now, this is just the first book in the series. How many books do you anticipate and, and where will we see Cherry go from the uh, 10-year-old she is now to whatever age at the end of the series? I am actually writing a book per year. So each book has four seasons, one full school year, and it's following Cherry from the ages of 10 through 19. So I'm going to actually go all the way up to 19. So it'll be a full nine books. Okay, and I wanted to uh, just ask you maybe like a technical question, if you want to call it. It's a, the picture of a, a little girl with red hair. Looks like the kind of school jumpers they've had in Catholic schools, but I guess not exclusive to them. Where did you get the picture of the little girl on the cover? So it was actually from Christian Faith Publishing. They've done the full service publishing for me. And so they were able to have a cover artist do the book cover for me. Well, Robin, I've certainly enjoyed talking with you. Anything else you'd like to leave with the listeners about the book? Just that it is a very heartwarming story and a very coming-of-age story of a girl that is feeling isolated and knowing that she's not sure of where her life is going to take her. But throughout the series, she becomes more confident in who she is and what her abilities are and that God is, is on her side. Everybody, there are several places where you can get a copy of Cherry Pie, the Barnes & Noble website, Amazon.com, and even iTunes. This is Steve Eastman reporting from Charlotte for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. you hear this.com.